Here are my thoughts on the Joe Rogan interview with Donald Trump. First of all, I was very skeptical about how this was gonna go. Was it just gonna be a softball type interview? How is this gonna go down? Very skeptical. But I said, all right, let me give him a chance and let's see. This is my thoughts on the Joe Rogan interview with Donald Trump. So first of all, I was super skeptical because essentially if the election was held based on only Joe Rogan's audience voting and no one else, Donald Trump would win by a landslide. It wouldn't even be close. And unfortunately, in that realm, today, it's not about ideology. It's not about conservatism. It's not about, like, they have different opinions of how to do things and less taxes. Those days are over. The conservative movement today is something completely different. So that means if Joe Rogan's going to do an interview with Donald Trump, you can expect it to be a softball interview. But I said, given the benefit of the doubt, let me take a look. Went to the beginning, and then the very first thing... Joe Rogan does is this appeal to the victimhood, which is a core part of Donald Trump's brand of just weak, spineless victim complaining and crying. So Joe Rogan chooses to start talking about how everyone's attacking Trump and they used to be cool with him. Joe Rogan does this for a living. He knows the importance of the very beginning of starting a podcast. So starting it that way, imagine for a second, Kamala Harris does an interview on Brian Tyler Cohen's channel. And the first thing that Brian Tyler Cohen, and he actually would do something like this because he is super partisan, but anyway, imagine the first thing Brian Tyler Cohen says is, I looks, it looks like a lot of people have been attacking you. You've been attacked by this group and that group, and you've been smeared, and it's absolutely been insane how you've been attacked. Imagine if that's how Brian Tyler Cohen started an interview with Kamala Harris. I think everyone on the right would see it for what it is. Well, that's how Joe Rogan started the interview. So once I saw he was doing that, then I was like, okay, I see what this is going to be. I didn't need to see anything more. I skipped to the end to see maybe he was just trying to loosen Trump up. And a three-hour interview is a long time to be pressed and ask hard questions. So Trump would have been burnt out at the end if that was the case. I skipped to the end and Trump seemed to be chilling. Joe Rogan seemed to be chilling. And it was at that point that I knew that pretty much it went exactly as I expected. I could be wrong. I'm making assumptions here. But I don't think it was a real interview. I think that it probably was just a softball interview, which made Trump look very good to the target demographic for Donald Trump. There you have it. Was I right? Was I wrong? Did you watch the interview? Three hours is a lot of time. I'm not going to dedicate three hours watching something that is unserious any more than I want to watch a three-hour rally with Kamala Harris, with Beyonce and whatever. I got better things to do. Case in point, I got a window installation to finish.